Welcome back students. In this video segment, we will take a look at one section, section 13.4, motion in space, velocity and acceleration. What we're going to do in this section is generalize some very basic concepts and formulas that you learned in, some of them you learned in physics, but we also learned them in calculus one with regard to, or having to do with motion specifically. Um, Let's take a look, let's take a look back. Let's take a look at, at in calcul in calcula from calculus one. We learned about motion on a straight line. So suppose we have a straight line. <laughs> now suppose that we're looking at a, a road, a freeway or whatever, and we mark off on that road a place we're gonna call zero. And we call that road, say, the S axis. S axis, a very common letter used for for uh, position in in, uh, in one dimension. And suppose we're located at this point right here at some point S on the S axis. Okay, so here's our car. Don't laugh, I can't draw. Well, you can laugh. I guess I won't hear you. <laughs> okay, so here's a car. I've done worse. <laughs> and I'd like to review with you before we before we generalize this the, these ideas uh, into three space. I'd like to look back in, in one space what we looked at or what you looked at in, in Calc one. So we let S equal the position of an object, and the position gives you the location of the object, and it's a location relative to a point we're going to call zero. So you can call zero home, and S is uh, if S is positive, it's the number of miles that you are away from home. We also have a quantity called V for velocity. Uh, v is the time derivative of position, or it's ds dt, and again, that equals velocity. Not to be confused with speed. Velocity gives you speed, but it also gives you something else and direction. So velocity is a vector quantity that you probably didn't even call a vector in, in uh, when you studied this in Calc 1 because you didn't have vectors at that point. <laughs> so uh, speed is the absolute value of velocity. The absolute value of velocity is speed and you lose the, the direction. Okay. So if we're on a road, then v greater than zero means uh, moving to the right or positive direction or if it's up and down up uh, V less than zero means moving left moving in the next negative direction or moving down etc okay so here's a here's a real quick example so example what do we know if Let's say S at 1 is negative 7. Um, what else? And S prime at 1 equals negative 30. Okay, and we'll assume that time is in hours and distance is in miles. Okay, so what does this tell us? What does this tell us? It tells us that at time equals one hour, I'm at, I'm located one mile away from wherever I'm going to call zero. So it tells me at time equals one hour, uh, I'm located right here. It also tells me I am moving to the left at 30 miles per hour. Okay, so moving to the left, y to the left, because of the minus sign, moving to the left at 30 miles per hour, per hour, okay? What's missing? What's missing from this? What's missing? And, and by missing, I mean, um, what else would you like to know? about the person's motion. What what do we not know about the person's motion? The person is one mile away from home and, and heading back and, and moving left, moving back home at 30 miles per hour at that moment. What do we not, what else do, do we 
would we like to know? We'd like to know if the guy is speeding up or if he's slowing down or, or if he's, he's moving at a constant rate of 30 miles per hour. That S prime of 1 equals negative 30 it says that, that the guy is moving at 30 miles per hour, moving to the left, only at that time. It doesn't say that what's happening in an instant later, if, it, if the person is putting on the brakes, speeding up or slowing down or whatever. Okay, We need something else for that. We need, we need something else. Well, the the uh, hint to what we need, if you if you haven't figured it out, the hint to what we need is is in what I said. We don't know if the guy is speeding up or slowing down. Speeding up or slowing down is a measure of acceleration. Acceleration. So the goals the goals in this section are to take these quantities plus the the acceleration quantity, and generalize them into into three space. Uh, before we do that, I want to I want to go back a little bit here and talk about what acceleration is in, on, in one dimension. Then I want to bring up something from physics. In fact, the whole course, this, not the whole course, but the whole section is really a, a physics section. Don't panic if you haven't had physics. We, we assume that you, that you haven't taken any physics, that you only, the only thing we assume you have had is Calc 1. Uh, if you've had physics, it's great. If not, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about acceleration on a line. Then I want to talk about uh, one of Newton's laws. Isaac Newton's second law has to do with uh, the relationship between force, uh, pushing and pulling and weight, uh, how much we weigh and, and, and so forth as it relates to acceleration. Okay, And when we can do that, we can get a good uh, intuitive feel and, and that, that statement is, is literally true. We get a good intuitive feel for what acceleration is if we, if we can borrow from Newton's second law. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, before, we, before we get into that, let's talk about a, a third quantity. We already, have, we already have the two quantities, S is position, uh, V is S prime or DSTT. And that is uh, velocity, which gives us speed and direction. And we have acceleration, which is the rate of change of velocity. So we'll stop there for just a second. The rate of change of velocity. If your velocity is increasing, if the velocity is increasing, your, your acceleration will be positive. If your velo that's your derivative. Of, of your velocity. If your acceleration is decreasing, the derivative of a decreasing function is negative. Your acceleration would be negative. So uh, dv dt, which is acceleration, or the second time pos derivative of position, this is acceleration. Um, so uh, position, by position we mean location. By velocity, we mean speed and direction. So, what do we mean by what do we mean by acceleration? We mean speeding up or slowing down. Speeding down, <laughs> slowing down, slowing down. Okay. In physics, there's another there's another derivative, the derivative of acceleration, um, and those of you who had physics, you know that that's a, that quantity is called jerk. Jerk. If you're accelerating, that means if you're if, let's say for a moment you're accelerating and you're and you're speeding up, and so you're speeding up at a, with a constant acceleration, and then you push the, push your your uh, pedal to the metal, you push your pedal down, you're going to accelerate even more. Suddenly, you're going to experience a jerk. Besides feeling pulled forward because you're accelerating, you're going to feel a sudden jerk. And that is a, a, a measured in, by the rate of change of your acceleration. Well, we're going, to, we're going to stop with acceleration. We're not going to look at the quantity jerk. Um, but wait, what we are going to do before we, before we get to um, three spaces, we need to look more closely at acceleration. We need to give it a... A sort of human touch. What does acceleration mean to, let's even even go be more general, to give it a more um, layman's uh, intu uh, intuitive feel. 
what does a person who doesn't, uh, what, how can I explain acceleration to a person who isn't taking calculus or physics or, or whatever? Well, Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Says there's an in intimate connection between uh, acceleration and pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling is a measure is a, is a measure of force. Force and force is a vector, but I, I'll keep the arrows off it for for now. Force is a measure of push and pull. Force is a measure of pushing and pulling. Your weight is the force. Uh, due to gravity, it's the force that the Earth is ex exerting on you. Your weight is is a force. Is, is the weight is your weight is not your mass. Your mass is different from your weight. If you go off into space, um, besides not being able to breathe, that would be a few other problems. But if you if you were out in space far enough from the Earth, let's say a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand miles away from the Earth, but not too, not too close to the Moon though. <laughs> then your weight would be negligible. Your weight would, would the, farther, the farther away you, you get from the Earth and stay away from other large bodies, that your weight decreases or diminishes towards zero, but your mass never changes. The mass, the amount of stuff that you, that you have in you, doesn't change unless you lose weight <laughs> without leaving the Earth. <laughs> so force equals, this is his second law, it equals the mass, how much stuff you have in you, times your the acceler your acceleration. Okay, now look at that for a minute. If your acceleration is big, you experience a, a experience a force, a big push or pull. Now I want to be much more specific though. For linear motion, that means motion on a line, which we're going to stay on for about fifteen minutes or so. Then we'll get off the, the lines. For motion, for linear motion, uh, acceleration greater than zero amounts to a pull. Let's get the arrow out of there. Amounts to a pull or push, if you want, to the right. To the right. Okay, acceleration negative is a pull or push if you want to use either word to the left okay okay now think about that if you are moving to the right and you accelerate and your acceleration is positive that means you gain velocity Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So if acceleration is positive, your velocity is increasing. You're gaining velocity. What are you going to feel on your back in the car? You're going to feel pulled to the right. If, you, if your acceleration if your velocity is positive, you're moving to the right, and then you're pulled to the right, you're going to, you're going to feel push. You're going to, you're going to feel, pull, I'm sorry. If, you're, if your velocity is positive and your acceleration is positive, you're going to feel pulled to the right. Now, suppose your velocity is positive, you're moving in the positive direction, and you start losing velocity, your acceleration's negative. You're going to feel your seatbelt pulling you back. To, you're going you're gonna to feel pulled in the opposite direction that you're moving. So acceleration less than zero amounts to a pull to the left, a pull to the left. Now I want to do a little bit of a... A thought exercise with you to to, uh, to further uh, acquaint you with the concepts uh, the concept of acceleration really but, but really the the three concepts of position excuse me velocity and acceleration so all of these situations and I think I'm gonna have three of them all of these three situations involve us being on a road Okay, I'll enter, introduce a little space in here. That's better. We're on a road. Here's the uh, position S equals zero. And here's my location, S. And here's my car, same old car. I can't draw. I love cars, too. You'd think I'd be able to draw them better. <laughs> so suppose we're given this information. Given. 
s is greater than zero, which is which is pretty apparent from my drawing. S is greater than zero. V is greater than zero. And a is greater than zero. Suppose my position is positive, my velocity is positive, and my acceleration is positive. So let's see if we can come up with some conclusions based on this. I'd like you to try to feel what's going on, or at least mentally picture what's going on. So the s is greater than zero just means I have a positive location. I'm located to the right of, of s equals zero. Okay. V greater than zero means I'm moving to the right. A being greater than zero, acceleration is positive, means I'm gaining velocity. I'm gaining velocity. Gaining velocity. But I'd like you to think about acceleration in terms of push and pull. That means I'm pulled to the right. Now, let's combine the ideas that uh, combine the ideas that are expressed by velocity and acceleration. Now, let me ask you a question. If I'm moving to the right and I'm being pulled to the right, what am I going to do? If I'm already moving to the right and then I experience a pull to the right, what's going to happen? If you haven't figured it out, here's the first word. I'm going to be speeding what? No, I guess that's not a really good thing, speeding up. I kind of gave it away with the word speeding. So if you're, pull, if you're moving to the right and you're pulled to the right, you're going to speed up. Okay. So here's our next situation. I don't think I'll redraw this. I used to redraw this every time. Ah, I'll redraw it. I'll redraw it after I, I, I go back here a little bit. So S greater than zero S greater than zero means I'm located in a positive direction. V greater than zero means I'm moving to the right. A greater than zero. A greater than zero means I'm pulled to the right. So if I'm moving to the right and I'm pulled to the right, I'm going to speed up. So given, given now, S is greater than zero. V is greater than zero. And a is less than zero. Okay, let's see if I can just cheat here and be probably easier just for me to draw it again. I don't want to. <laughs> There's a chance that I'll screw this up just by drawing it here. Okay, so let me get rid of the a there. All right, so here's my drawing again. So we're given s is greater than zero. So s is greater than zero is just telling us my location is to the right of s equals zero. So s is greater than zero says I have a positive location. Positive location. Nothing changed here. Uh, v greater than zero means I'm moving right. So v greater than zero v greater than zero means I'm moving in that direction to the right. Uh, but a less than zero, a less than zero means I'm pushed, or pulled if you want, pushed to the left. I'm losing velocity. My velocity is decreasing. Losing velocity. Velocity is decreasing. Velocity is decreasing. Be careful, because velocity decreasing doesn't mean I'm going to slow down. I might have got you there. I might have gotten you there. Here it does. Let me repeat what I just said. I'm moving to the right and I'm pushed to the left. Just imagine if this was happening to you. If you were moving to the right and someone pushes you in the opposite direction, what are you going to what are you going to do? You're going to slow down. But I just finished saying, I dropped a little bomb. I said that just because you're, you're, you're pushed to the left doesn't mean you're going to slow down. Just because your acceleration is negative, you're losing velocity, you're going to slow down. How can that be true? If you're losing velocity, you should slow down, right? No. No, this is the tricky part about acceleration. Acceleration is less than zero does, it always means you're losing velocity, your velocity is decreasing. Always, 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 well, at least on a straight line. 
Okay, what am I doing here? I want to copy my drawing again. Uh, but I want to I want to uh, look at a, an, another situation that's 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 a little tricky. So given uh, same old s positive, same old positive location. Velocity is less than zero now, and acceleration is less than zero. I'm trying to focus on the the uh, the trick or the tricky part of acceleration here, meaning. Um, Acceleration less than zero does not at all necess necessarily mean that you're slowing down, even though it does always mean you're losing velocity. Okay, so v is less than zero means moving to the left. A less than zero means you're pushed to the left. A acceleration is push and pull. A greater than zero push to the right. A left less than zero pushed or pulled to the left means losing velocity. Velocity. Okay, so here's my car. So I really don't need this car to do this, huh? Okay. Here's my car. Here's that positive velocity. Okay. So S is oops, I'd like to be red for this. Positive location, s greater than zero. Now my velocity is less than zero, so uh, velocity less than zero means I'm moving, moving to the left. So I'm moving, going home. At the same time, acceleration less than zero means I'm pushed to the left. If I'm moving to the left already, and then I'm pushed in that same direction. What am I going to do? I'm going to speed up. I'm going to gain speed. I'm going to lose velocity, but I'm going to gain speed. Okay, how can that be? How can that be? I'll tell you. I'll show you. Think about this with numbers. Suppose I'm moving, I'm on the freeway moving 60 miles per hour to the left. So my velocity is negative 60. Suppose I'm, again, I'm moving to the left at 60 miles per hour. So my velocity is negative 60. And then my acceleration is less than zero. That means I'm pushed to the left. If I'm moving at negative 60 and then I'm pushed to the left by the wind or whatever, or my gas pedal, then my velocity is going to go from negative 60 and decrease. It doesn't mean negative 50, negative 40, negative 30. Decreasing means becomes more negative. Negative 60, negative 70, negative 80, negative 90, negative. I'm losing velocity. Negative 90 miles an hour, then a negative 100 miles an hour. I'm speeding up. I'm losing velocity, but I'm gaining speed. Negative 60, negative 70, negative 80, negative 90. Those are my velocities. They're getting smaller. They're becoming more negative. Now, what are my speeds, though? They're the absolute values of those things. They're 60, 70, 80, 90. So I'll be speeding up, speeding up, okay? So this gives, this gives if you haven't had physics, this gives you a first inkling of the first problems with uh, um, uh, acceleration and velocity and, and position in physics, okay? So this takes some, some getting used to to develop a physical intuition with these concepts. Now to Calc 3. Now we move into the world of Calc 3. Now what we want to do is replace this, this road, which just goes to the right and to the left, with motion in 3 space. Motion in 3 space. That means I would like to have, uh, to be able to consider motion along curves in 3 space. So if, let's say here's our Here's our three space model. We're in, I'm just putting us in the first octant just to be simple. And we have some space curve along which we're traveling. We kind of started with space curves when we looked at the T and B reference frame from the last section. But instead, but instead of having a position function S as a function of T, in three space, what we have is a position vector. 
In three space, what we have is a position vector. Let me uh, redraw my curve so that I can draw some stuff on it. Well, here's here's our curve. Here, here's our new curve in three space. <laughs> All right, so here's our position function. R will be a function of time. So R of t replaces s in, in, in one dimension. R of t is your uh, position vector. Position vector. And it tells you location. The tip of the, the tip of the position vector gives you a point in three space. Okay. We have velocity, which is also a vector is uh, dr dt r dt or or prime and this is our velocity vector vector our velocity vector before it told us speed and direction it does the same thing now it does the same thing now the the uh, magnitude of my velocity vector, not the absolute value of velocity. There's no such thing as the absolute value of a vector. The magnitude of the, of of your velocity vector is your speed. Okay. The direction of your velocity vector is in the direction of motion. So if, suppose we were moving. Uh, suppose the curve is oriented according to the little red arrows I'm drawing on here. So your velocity vector then will be tangent to your curve. The velocity vector is tangent to your curve and it's the time derivative of your, of your position vector. Uh, a much more co a complicated quantity is your acceleration. When we're going to spend a lot of time talking about acceleration. Acceleration, just like before, is your derivative of your velocity, in this case your velocity vector, or the second derivative of your position vector. Or if you want, it's using the uh, prime notation, it's v prime of t or r double prime. Okay, and this is acceleration. It also measures push and pull but the push and pull isn't just to the right or left. It could be in any direction, any direction, any direction, any direction. Your speed, your derivative of of your your uh, I'm sorry, the absolute value of your nah, I almost did it. The the magnitude of your velocity vector is the rate of change of of your uh, distancing dif distance traveling along the curve. Okay, so your speed is your, or your, your speed is your speed along the curve. The S is the arc length uh, that we talked about in the last section. So it's the rate of change of your, your arc length or your, your speed along the curve. Okay, okay much more to, much more to follow. I want to take a look at a, at a very specific example. Okay. So here's our here's our first example with this stuff. Suppose an amusement park ride, and I want this ride to be in the xy plane. So suppose an amusement park ride in the xy plane travels according to x equals five cosine t and y equals five sine t. So by now you should be able to look at that and within maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds be able to tell me what kind of curve this is. What do you think of it? It is a circle. X squared plus Y squared equals equals 25 is a circle of radius 25 centered at the origin. So that, that should be pretty, pretty clear by now. If not, then you can stop the videotape and, and check it out yourself. Um, in any case, the first part of this problem is I want to find, I want to find the three quantities that we're talking about. I want to find the position vector, the velocity vector and acceleration vector. This is a very easy part of the problem. Position vector is 5 cosine t. The vector whose components are 5 cosine t and 5 sine t. That's it. <laughs> Your velocity vector is, the velocity is the derivative of position. So your velocity vector 
equals the derivative of your position vector. So it's negative 5 sine t, 5 cosine t. And your acceleration vector, which is the rate of change of your velocity, or the second derivative of your position, is simply another is simply another derivative. So your your uh, velocity or acceleration vector is a derivative of negative five times the sine of t is negative five times the cosine of t, and then derivative of five cosine is five negative five sine of t. Okay, so we have our our position, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, not very exciting. Not very exciting. Okay, N now I want to get a little bit more of an idea of what's going on physically. What's going on physically? So sketch R, V, and A at T equals 3 pi over 4 seconds if you want and then in interpret. And let's give a physical interpretation. Interpret. Okay. Well, uh, let's find these quantities. R at 3 pi over 4 seconds, or whatever units of, of, of uh, time you're going to be measuring. Well, the cosine, of, the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is, well, 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2 if you were to graph it. Quadrant 2, the cosine is negative. So, uh, we get a uh, negative 5 radical 2 over 2 and sine is positive in quadrant 2 so positive 5 radical 2 over 2 okay so the velocity at 3 pi over 4 is the sine and the sine of 3 pi over 4 is, all, is still positive but that first component has a negative sign there so negative 5 radical 2 over 2 again and 5 cosine cosine's negative in quadrant 2 so 5 negative 5 radical 2 over 2 so acceleration at 3 pi over 4 is uh, negative 5 cosine of, of 3 pi over 4. Cosine is negative in quadrant 2, but there's a, ne there's a negative sign there already, so positive 5 radical 2 over 2. And negative 5 sine. Sine is positive in, in 2, quadrant 2, but we have a negative sign there, so minus 5 radical 2 over 2. Okay. So interpret. Interpret. Uh, we're going to graph them. We're going to graph also. Um, but I want to give some sort of interpretation here. So the tip uh, of vector, the tip of the position vector, tells us where we are. It tells us where we are. Okay. Before we get into velocity and acceleration, where are we? We're on a circle of radius 5. So let me draw that. So here's our circle, radius 5. We know from our analysis of a very similar uh, set of parametric equations that this amusement park ride is, is moving in a counterclockwise direction. Counterclockwise direction. There's going to be a clue in a minute that's also going to tell us that, but we know from our earlier investigation of parametric equations from another lecture that had us on a circle of radius 1, with cosine and sine in their parametric equations, we're moving in a counterclockwise direction. So um, the tip of the vector tells us where we are. So let's draw the tip of a vector. Let's say we'll use purple for our vectors. Why not? Tip of the vector tells us where we are. Tip of the vector tells us exactly where we are. I'm trying to draw this vector. Yeah, good enough. So there's my position vector. How do I know it's exactly cutting the quadrant two and a half? Look at the coordinates. Coordinates have the same absolute value, so this this uh, this position vector is in quadrant two. Okay, now let's look at the next. Let's look at the next quantity. The next quantity is our velocity. It tells the velocity tells us 
tells us two things. It tells us which way we're moving. The velocity will always be tangent to the curve along which we're traveling. It's always it always tangent to us. It's always push it's always telling us the direction we're moving. So it tells us which way we're moving. It tells us which way oops which way we're moving. And if you took the magnitude of that vector, it would tell us how fast. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so let's graph that vector. So the the uh, position vector, which suddenly turned red, really kind of, kind of like to keep it as, it's getting kind of huge. Oh my goodness. I had to stop the vector. My, my uh, surface was giving me some really weird pictures of a velocity vector. I think you probably saw it. Anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the velocity vector tells us which way we're moving. So let's draw a velocity vector. Our velocity vector tells us which way we're going. Look at the coordinates. They're exactly, the absolute values are the same. So we get the, a similar situation. And... Again, I'm having a hard time with my Surface Pro. Okay, sorry about that, folks. So my velocity vector is going to point in a direction of motion. Okay, both coordinates are negative, so it points in the direction that I've drawn. So if our velocity vector is, po is pulling us in the or pushing us in the in the tangent direction. Um, what about what about the acceleration vector? What about the acceleration vector? This, this acceleration vector is going to bring up a uh, problem from early physics that students have with, with uh, acceleration. acceleration. Now, I want you to think about this. This will, this will help you out. The acceleration, the acceleration is going to tell us exactly what we want it to it, it tell. It's going to, it's going to tell us what, how we feel in terms of push and pull. We feel... This is going to be unintuitive for some people. Pulled in which direction? Look at the acceleration. The first coordinate's positive. The second coordinate's negative. So if I if I put an acceleration vector, let's say I draw it in in um, oh I don't know black. Let's say, let's say I draw it in black. Starting at our location, the acceleration is going to pull us directly back toward the origin. The acceleration and position vectors have exactly the same magnitude. The acceleration, the black vector, is going to be push, pulling us, indicating that we're pulled in the direction toward the origin. Now imagine this, you're on this curve that's going round and round and round, like space cups at Disneyland, if they, or space cups, teacups at Disneyland, if they still have them. You're going round and round and round. You might think, I don't feel pulled inward. I feel like I'm going to fling outward. And I hate to break this to you, but no, you don't. <laughs> now imagine you were in the teacups uh, on our teacup ride, twirling round and round and round and round and round. And you were going round and round at a constant speed. Okay. And then imagine closing your eyes. What force would you feel on you? If you were moving round and round at a constant speed, you wouldn't feel any kind of push in direct in direction of your motion, not at all. If you're moving in a constant speed, you don't feel anything in that in the direction of motion. But what you will feel is the back of your seat trying to keep you from being flung out. You will feel a push from the back of your seat toward the center of that teacup. That's your acceleration. And that's unintuitive for some people at, very, at, at first. So my, my position vectors, my velocity vectors, and my acceleration vectors are drawn here. Position tells you where you are. Velocity tells you what direction you're moving. And acceleration says what you're going to experience in terms of push and pull. I have to experience a pull inward toward the center of the circle. Look at it logically. If you, if you didn't experience that pull inward toward the center and you were still twirling around and around, what's going to happen? You're going to be flung off in the, in, the, in the direction of your velocity. The only thing that's keeping you from, from, from being flung off the circle is your acceleration, is the pull that you experience toward the center of 
the circle. Okay, so we feel uh, pulled inward, pulled inward, which to some is a little unintuitive. Okay, so let's find, let's uh, do one more thing before we move on. See, find the speed. Find the speed at t equals 3 pi over 4 seconds or whatever. We can think about the speed in feet per second or whatever. So the rate of change of my position along the curve ds dt, that's going to be equal to the to uh, the magnitude of my velocity vector. And we're going to borrow something from physics. Uh, the magnitude of my velocity vector is the letter v without the velocity arrow uh, or the velocity arrow, the vector arrow. Okay. Well, the velocity uh, it has both the coordinates are negative five radical two over two. What is the magnitude of that vector? It's the magnitude of the vector negative five over radical two. Uh, uh, the, the square root of, of the square root of negative five over radical two squared plus another negative five over radical two squared. Okay, that's just five. Okay. Um, this is the same thing as 5, the square root of 5 fourths plus 5 fourths I paused the video to realize that I was that I put in the wrong numbers. So I'm going to keep this real. So I'm, I'm not going to cheat and um, just make it disappear. <laughs> The components of my velocity are negative 5 radical 2 over 2. Okay. I was getting the right magnitude, but I was putting the wrong things in. So negative 5 radical 2 over 2, negative 5 radical 2 over 2. Sorry about that. So uh, 5 radical 2 over 2 squared is, well, 5 radical 2 over 2 is the same thing as 5 over radical 2. Might be better to look at, easier to look at it that way. So I have 25 over 2 plus 25 over 2, that's that's uh, 5 over radical 2 squared plus 5 over radical 2 squared. Or uh, 50 over 2, which is 25, square root of 25 is 5. If you want feet per second, even though I really didn't write in the units of, of measure. So my speed is, is 5. Now the speed, the speed didn't depend on my location though. If you look back at our, our velocity vector, if you look back at our velocity vector, the speed, the magnitude of my velocity at any time is going to be 5. Okay, it, it's, it's a constant 5 no matter what t is, because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, that kind of thing. Okay, okay. now we're going to make an enormous leap. We're going to make a huge leap forward from from first and second year physics into three space. I want to be able to describe, I want to be able to describe the motion along the ride, a roller coaster ride or whatever in three space. Well, we're not in teacups. We're not traveling around in a circle uh, in the plane. Okay, so I'd like to develop a formula for acceleration in three space, in three space, okay? Okay, so here's sort of what's going on in, in on our ride. We're um, we're looking at a a uh, roller coaster, if you will, in three space, or a spaceship, or whatever, some object moving in three space. The position vector tells tells us where where the object's located. The velocity is tangent to the the uh, curve and points in the direction of motion. My acceleration is a measure or measures uh, push and pull. Now, if we're not moving around a circle, if we're not moving in a, around a circle with constant speed, my acceleration is not going to push me toward the origin. It's going to push me in some some more general direction. Okay, and that's that's what our goal is. Find a formula for this this quantity called acceleration. So let's be much more specific about this. Let's um let's take a look at let's take a look at 
Let's get rid of the position vector here. I just want to get it off our drawing. If my Surface Pro will allow me to there. Let's see. Okay, so here's here's that vector we're looking for, our acceleration vector. I want to make my accelerate acceleration vector. I want to look for an acceleration vector that measures that measures an amount that we feel in the tangent direction that t is the unit tangent vector and a sub t is uh, a scalar it's a scalar it's a scalar being multiplied by the tangent direction direction that that scalar is called the tangential component of acceleration it tells us what we feel in the direction that we're moving acceleration and direction we're moving but i'd also like to make it uh plus what we would experience in the normal direction to our moving to the direction of motion so our tan remember our tangent unit tangent vector points in the direction of motion so here's our unit tangent vector t is the ugliest vector i've drawn today that's my unit tangent vector and my acceleration then is going to be equal to the unit tangent vector stretched out by an amount that we feel pulled forward. That's the, that's the tangential component of acceleration. So that would amount to this vector here, a sub t, t, okay? We also have uh, our acceleration vector being the normal vector, unit vector, length one, the normal vector stretched out to give us the amount that we feel pulled inward. So this would be a sub n multiplied by my normal vector. My normal vector stretched out by the quantity which gives us the feeling that we feel pulled inward. So together you can see that if you, if you combine these two vectors, but to take the resultant of these two vectors, the tangential component plus the normal component, we should get the acceleration, the net result of what we would feel pushed forward and inward. I mean, that's a big chunk to chew. So let's um let's derive a formula for this this acceleration vector. Okay, the, the the this this derivation is is absolutely standard. It starts out with the 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 unit tangent vector and how we define it. The unit tangent vector is r prime uh over the length of r prime this shouldn't be new to you okay, if this is new to you then you haven't done homework <laughs> this is uh at the center of the last section and i think it'll let this might be the one before section 13.3 13.2 okay i think it starts at 13.2 okay but um uh, r prime for this section now r prime is our velocity vector so the tangent vector is really the velocity vector divided by the length of your velocity vector. Now, the length of your velocity vector is your speed along the curve, and we just use the variable v for that, remember? So your unit tangent vector is your velocity vector divided by your the, the, the scalar speed. Okay, now let's uh, let's multiply both sides by the speed. So your velocity vector is your speed along the curve times your tangent vector. Now this should absolutely make sense. If this is your motion along the curve and this is your tangent vector, let's say t, and your speed is in the direction of motion, say v, then your that v that velocity is in the direction of your tangent vector how long should it be the long the length of your velocity vector should be speed so your velocity vector should just be your tangent vector scaled forward scaled larger or smaller by your speed so this makes absolute physical sense that velocity is speed times tangent okay
and again, this discussion doesn't need, doesn't uh, require that you have a physics background, but it sure as heck ha helps, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so onward. The acceleration. Your oops, I want to go back to black. Your acceleration is nothing more than the derivative of your velocity with respect to time. Okay. So it is your time derivative. It's d d t of v t. Remember, v is a scalar. It's a scalar function, but it's a scalar. Okay, this uh, v t is is could also be written v of t times capital tangent of t, unit tangent of t. So these are scalar. These are scalar quant. I'm sorry. These are functions. It's a scalar function times a vector function, and we have a product rule. The product rule says the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first function times the derivative of your second. Okay, now keep in mind the goal. The goal. The goal was to have acceleration equal to some pull forward times the unit f forward if you will, vector, unit tangent vector, plus a pull inward times the unit inward or the, the, the unit normal vector. Okay, so, so far I've got part of that. So far I have, it looks like the tangential component of acceleration is uh, V prime. More about that in, in a bit. But what's hidden here is I need the normal component of acceleration. So I'm going to force it to happen. I'm going to force that normal component of acceleration out using some really simple algebra. Well, V, my normal, the normal, the definition of the normal vector is it's the tangent, the derivative of the tangent, unit tangent divided by the length of the unit tangent. If that doesn't look forward to, uh, familiar to you, then you probably haven't done homework. <laughs> this is a standard formula from our last section. Okay. By the way, if you haven't discovered it, you should not be looking at this section without doing homework for 13.3. It's not healthy. <laughs> so um, anyways, so I'd throw that in there. Uh, so if stuff doesn't look familiar to you, you should stop the video and go back and do homework and start over again with this. Okay, so um, the unit normal vector is t prime divided by the length of t prime. So I'm inserting the length of t prime, but I can't do that without changing the without changing the value of my quantity. So look what I did. I took t prime divided by the length of t prime and multiplied by the length of t prime. Okay, that's my normal vector between v and the length of t prime right there now the length of t prime doesn't have a lot of physical meaning for us but the length of t prime over the length of r prime certainly does that's a formula for curvature well, i can't do that without adjusting the change and multiplying by the length of r prime so all i've done is i've introduced a whole bunch of stuff without really changing anything and the net result is that I get v prime t plus, and the I get a v. Now the length of r prime, the length of r prime is v. It's my speed along the curve. It's just v again. So I'm going to get v squared. I'm going to get v squared. The length of t prime over the length of r prime, that's curvature. So I'm going to get k curvature v squared. And t prime over length of t prime, that is n. Okay. So this is my acceleration vector. What This mathematics is amazing, I think. It's absolutely amazing that this mathematics can, can do this kind of thing. Um, the, the idea though is this, the, the, the tangential component of acceleration, what I feel when I'm riding this ride in space or a spaceship, what I feel push, what I feel in terms of forward motion is V prime. 
and that should make sense. V, v is your speed along the curve. V is your speed along the curve. V prime is, is your acceleration along the curve. So if your acceleration along the curve, this is your acceleration along curve. If your acceleration along the curve is big, if you're speeding up along the curve, you're going to feel a pull forward. That makes exact sense here. The, the tangential component of my velocity is, is the, deri the derivative of my speed along the curve. That's my acceleration along the curve. If my acceleration along the curve is big, I'm going to feel pull forward big, a big pull forward. Okay, that's amazing that this does this. Now, let's analyze the normal component of acceleration. So here, here's what we have so far. We have acceleration is in some direction. And it's a combination of a pull forward and an experience of a pull inward. The pull forward is a, the tangential component of acceleration, and that's the acceleration along the curve. Ride speeds up, I feel pulled forward. Now, the normal component of acceleration, the normal component, the normal component is the curvature of the curve times the speed along the curve squared. Now think about this, you're on a ride in space, Disneyland if you want, if it ever opens again. <laughs> You're on it, or Six Flags, or whatever. You're going to feel pulled inward, depending on the curvature of the curve. If you have a if you have a curve that takes a sharp bend in it, you're going to feel a, a pull, a gigantic pull inward. If the curve is almost linear, but still curves a little bit, you're not going to feel much inward pull. You're going to feel an inward pull if there's a big turn in the curve. Turning in the curve is, a me uh, is measured by the curvature. Curvature is a rate at which the curve bends. So this totally makes sense. So what else is your inward pull, the normal component, going to be dependent on? Suppose you're riding along this curve at 5 miles an hour. You're not going to feel a great pull inward. But suppose you're now on the curve at 50 miles an hour so your your speed is 50. that 50 when you square it will turn into 2500 so your your pull inward will not only depend on the curvature of the curve but how fast you're moving along the curve so if you get both of those things a sharp curve a sharp turn plus you're going really fast you're going to be feel on a tremendous pull inward okay so acceleration, acceleration is a combination of acceleration is a combination of a pull forward plus a pull inward, where the pull forward is just the acceleration along the curve. And the pull inward is the how much the, the curve is bending times how fast you're going. Okay. These are very these are amazing formulas in their in their simplicity, their absolute simplicity. Okay. Okay. So to end um, to end I want to give a couple of formulas, common formulas for the tangential and normal components of acceleration. Uh, these these formulas the formulas as they are they're okay a sub t and a sub n they're okay the the problem is that they involve some pretty complicated things to find v prime v prime the the, the tangential component is um, 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 um is a complicated quantity v prime that is uh, the derivative with respect to t of v or the derivative with respect to t of the length of your velocity vector 
and that could be kind of rough to, to do to find. The uh, k curvature times v squared is kind of rough. The curvature is, is as a as a fancy as fancy formulas, but if you did homework, that those are those are difficult quantities to find. Uh, velocity is just the length of your the, uh, the speed of uh, v squared is just the length of your velocity squared, which isn't so bad. But this this normal component in particular can be pretty pretty uh, algebraically heavy. Okay, so it would be nice if we had some simple formulas for or simpler formulas or alternate formulas for the tangential and normal components. Okay, so let's take a look at at uh, at, at them. They're easy to derive. By the way, I'm gonna, so I'm going to derive them for you. Here's, here's your uh, acceleration vector, acceleration vector, and here's your velocity vector. And I would like my tangential component of acceleration. Now, look at look at what I'm projecting my acceleration vector onto the projection the projection of my I'm sorry the component of my acceleration vector the component of my acceleration vector in the direction of my motion that is my tangential tangential component of acceleration okay look at that look at how simple it is to see that geometrically my tangential component of acceleration, the amount of acceleration I feel, feel in, in the forward direction, which is in the direction of my velocity, one more time, is nothing more than the scalar component of my acceleration in the direction of velocity. And I have a formula for that. It's v dot a over length of v. My goodness, there's the, look at how simple it is. Look at, look at how absolutely simple it is. Your author, by the way, derives this, this formula. I believe he derives this formula, but he does it in a much more complicated way. Okay, This v dot a over length of v can be simply written as v dot a over the scalar function v. Okay, So that's the, the a shorthand formula for the tangential component. The normal component has an equally simple looking formula but it's a little harder to to derive normal component is curvature times speed squared okay one of my formulas for curvature was length of r prime cross length of r double prime over length of r prime cubed and v is the length of r prime so this is v squared Okay, so now let's use let's use the symbols that we're using in this section. R prime, that's V. R double prime, that's A. R prime, key, well, first of all, the, 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 the two factors of R prime are going to cancel with two of the factors of R prime cubed. But the length of R prime is just V again. Okay. So look at these look at these these two pretty simple formulas. The tangential component is velocity dot acceleration over speed, and your normal component of acceleration is the length of velocity cross acceleration over speed. These are two really cool formulas. Okay. Now there's one thing that I'm not going to lecture on that I want you to read from your textbook. It's simple reading. It goes fairly pretty quick, but you, you, I want you to read it on your own. Read about a projectile motion. Projectile motion in 13.4. Okay, and on the eighth edition of the textbook, it's on page 912. And once you do that, you're ready for you're ready for homework. Go ahead and dig into homework as soon as you can on this after reading about projectile motion. And that's it for this long section. I'm looking forward to talking with you all again soon.